This is the Grey's Illusion 110. It is a bold design for a bold performance. Of all the rackets that I've tested and reviewed over the last few months, this one does something better than all of the others. If you're interested in finding out what that is and you want more of the details, stay tuned. Links to all the individual sections can be found in the text description, so if you want to jump to something specifically, you can do that straight away. Let's start with the specs and techs. As supplied, this racket weighs 144 grams. Now I know it says 110 on here, but remember, as with all rackets, that is just the frame. No strings, no grommet set, and no grip, or sometimes even no resin. So 110 is the pure frame weight. 144 is as it's supplied. When you put the extra grip, uh, and I nearly always have to put an extra grip, and I assume that you do too, that becomes 156. Now the balance point originally is this black line here. Now I can't, I know you can't see it particularly well, but this is uh, 370, which is a little bit head heavy. Once you put the extra grip on, it becomes 350, which is much more evenly balanced. The first thing you'll notice about this frame, besides the color of course, is the thickness, the solidity of the frame. At its widest point, just above the grip, it is 80 millimeters. Now compare that with about 55 to 60 millimeters of most other rackets. So it's really chunky. Now, you might think that what that does is make the racket heavy, heavy, but it doesn't. But what it does do is it makes it stiff. This racket is a very stiff racket. The strings are Greytech, which I'm assuming are in-house uh, Grey's strings. They're not the worst strings I've ever seen in a racket uh, supplied by the manufacturer, but they're certainly not the sort of quality that you would get from Ashaway or uh, Technifiber. Although they might be very good strings, they just don't give me that impression. They feel very, very tight. Now here is an example uh, of, I've been playing with this, I've probably played probably played with this for about five hours now. And this is how it sounds. Now, let me quickly show you what the Ashaway Powerkill 110 SL uh, sounds like. And I played with it for about the same sort of time. A significant difference. Let's look at the visuals in a little bit more detail. Obviously, as I mentioned in the introduction, it's this bold uh, design, and I really like the yellow. I'm a little bit more meh on the gray and the orange, but it does work well. Uh, the orange strings work really well together. It kind of reminds me of nature, like the bumblebee and some of the snakes that are black and yellow. It's basically telling you, I am aggressive, I am dangerous. Keep away from me because I'm gonna cause you problems. And this is what this racket does. I'm not saying this racket is dangerous in the sense that you know, you'll know you hurt people, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But this racket's design represents its personality really, really well. Of all the rackets that I've tested in the last few months, this is the most powerful so far. From the moment I first started hitting with it, I could feel the power. Now, that doesn't suit me because I'm not a particular power player, but I can see it uh, suiting a lot of players. It's the kind of racket that impresses you from the moment you first start hitting with the ball. This racket seems to respond the best when you hit it with a lot of slice or perfectly flat. I'm not saying that this racket doesn't have any touch because obviously that would be wrong. What I'm saying is it responds better when you do slice it or when you don't put any slice on at all. It doesn't seem to work well when you just want to put your racket there and just give it a little bit of a push. I mean, at the front for those little counter drops, yes, but in the middle of the court, it doesn't really work well. So if your style of game is about a attacking the baller all of the time, then this could be a perfect solution for you. The tightness of the strings means that any shot that doesn't hit on the sweet spot is not particularly forgiving. Couple this with the stiffness of the frame, and I'm almost tending to say that this racket really is unforgiving. However, 
After a little while, once the strings have lost some of their tension, as it does with all new rackets, I began to feel more comfortable. But I do have to say that this is probably the racket's weakest point, its ability to hit the ball outside of the sweet spot. Which is interesting because when we get to the summary, I'm going to recommend it for a type of player who you wouldn't think would suit it. No matter how light or well balanced a racket is, a thicker, stiffer frame is going to feel less maneuverable than a thinner, flexible one. Due to its power, I had to change the way I swing. Now, whether that is right or not is for a deeper discussion another time. What matters is that eventually, I found the right way to control the ball and the racket. Perhaps it's my perception, but I don't really feel that this racket is suited to those quick fire reaction volleys, especially if you don't have a grip on it, because then it becomes a little bit head heavier. If you're the type of player who has a bigger flowing swing, then you might need to adapt that to the racket. And as I said earlier, whether that's right, I don't know. Only you can decide that. Going back to what I was saying earlier about some of the points, that this racket works well on the volleys if you actually hit it. Now, I know that that sounds obvious. Of course, you're going to hit it. But there's a difference between putting your racket in the way and intersecting the ball's flight path than actively trying to slice the ball and hit the ball with an intention. And this racket works well when you do that on the volleys. If you try to hit the ball or you try to volley, it works well. If you just let the ball come to you, not so good. So if your playing style is about attacking aggressive early volleys with intention, then this could be perfect. It's got plenty of power, so getting the ball out of the corner is definitely easy. Couple that with the fact that you might change your swing like I did to have a shorter, simpler swing, so maybe getting the ball out of the corner is even easier. But don't think that you'll just be able to come along and just flick your wrist and do some little terrible motion and the ball is gonna go exactly where you want it. This racket still requires you to have fairly good technique because it wants to be able to hit the ball properly, not just flick it. If you're new to the sport, Greys might be a name that you don't know. If you've been playing squash for a little bit longer, you've probably heard about them. They are possibly the current manufacturer with the oldest continuous manufacturing. They have been around for years. In fact, it tells you since 1855. They do make other types of equipment, but they have been around. So they've got a lot of history, a lot of experience in making rackets. So if the name is new, it's only because you haven't heard of it, not because they haven't been around that long. Currently only available in Europe via Norway, but if you live in the USA, Asia or Australasia, you should have no trouble getting one of these. I'd like to thank again Stig from Squash Boutique Inn and Steve from squash.com.au for being so helpful and supplying the rackets. Links to both of their websites are in the text description. Here's the hard part. I feel that this racket is suitable for three types of players. Number one, beginners. There is a lot of natural power in this racket. Even though I feel the forgivability, that's the idea of when the ball hits outside of the sweet spot, could be much better, I feel that the fact that it works really well with shorter swings and has that natural power seems to be a perfect match for beginners and newer players. Number two, attacking volleyers. If you're the type of player who likes to take the ball early, attack with a slice type motion, rushing your opponent, then this could be the perfect racket for you. In fact, it's probably tailor made for you because this is what it does best. Rush your opponent by hitting the ball hard, rush your opponent by taking the ball early. Keep your swing short, hit the ball cleanly, and this racket will respond really well. Number three. Power hitters. If you're the type of person who likes to smack the skin off the squash ball, then this racket will love you and you will love it. Like a sword forged for battle, this racket was designed to break squash balls. To summarize, is it my perfect racket? No, but that's because I'm not one of the three previously mentioned playing styles. Do I like the frame? Yes, very much. If this were the racket that I had to play with, I would give it to one of my hard hitting friends for a month, and then after they finish with it, get it back, and then the strings would have lost some tension. Once I restring it, I definitely 
string it at a lower tension than it comes in and I'd probably be able to play with this. The fact that I'm swinging uh, a little bit shorter and cleaner might mean that I would take a few more volleys than I would normally make. So if you've got one of these and you either agree or disagree with my observations then please leave a comment and as always if you've got any questions about this particular racket leave those in the comments as well. If you think the content of my videos is useful please consider subscribing to my channel and turn on notifications. This is a playlist of the technical aspects of squash which probably interests you if you've watched this video. This is a video that YouTube thinks is a really good fit for you. Thanks for watching and remember do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya!